I'm here with David Chait, CEO and founder of Travelify, which builds digital solutions for group travel. David, thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much. Appreciate the chance. David, you you talked about the, the story of Travelify. Thank you. And um, can you talk a little bit about what it's like day to day to actually do this um, management of, of the venture using data and using observations about customers? Absolutely. Um, so per our previous discussion, so much of what we do at Travify is driven by a, a lean mentality uh, thesis where everything we do is about pushing product quickly, learning from that and iterating. And from that really underlying that is data itself. Data is really our lifeblood and it is a, a real decision maker for us. Now at different stages of the development and life cycle of Travify, the form of that data can change very, very early on. It was pretty qualitative, frankly, based off of customer interviews, um, focus groups, and other things to understand those underlying problems. As we've grown and developed, it's been much, much more about the actual underlying data of how individuals, customers, and partners are using our platform, among other areas. Um, and to make sure that we really embody and live uh, that data aspect, uh, it's important for us that we make that a part of our daily rituals and the way we think about everything. Um, so the way we've structured that at Travify is beyond our daily check-ins and uh, stand-ups we have every morning for the team, we have a standing Monday morning meeting, which everyone from the team, whether you're on the product side of the house or the sales and marketing side of the house comes to. And we have rotating topics every Monday where an individual owner of data presents that data, and we have a group discussion about that, both interpreting it, but also what are the implications that we should take from that. So that could be on financial data. How's it going? What are sales like? That could be on sales and marketing data. What are our different channels of ways we acquire customers? Uh, be that actual outreach and sales on a business development standpoint, ads and other things, what do those look like? Or on the product side, what are some really great insights we can glean? Uh, if someone adds three things to an itinerary, they're X percent more likely to purchase a package or a hotel or whatever that might be. And what should we take from that? How can we drive that behavior? So we really make sure that we're constantly having these discussions and being thoughtful that that data is the underlying rationale and reason for really any large scale decisions we make. And so can you talk about the, the meetings that you, you have? Is this something you do every week and how who, who comes and how does the data get shared? Yeah, so these meetings are every week. We have um, the way we structure ourselves is every Monday, it's a full team meeting that everyone's there and different individuals are owners of different topics. So I personally own our overarching financial metrics. What's the health of the company in terms of our cash positions, finances, sales, et cetera. There's another person on our team who owns kind of the sales and marketing funnels there. Everything from traditional ads to our, your more uh, wrote uh, sales development, uh, representative sales executive types of numbers. There's another person on our team who owns the product funnel. What are those behaviors? What are those lessons? What can we take from, a, from an improvement standpoint? And these happen all the time. So while we also have your more traditional quarterly planning offsites and annual meetings of our team for more broad based uh, decision making and focus, those are not the points where people are presented with data for the first time and think about it. It's a much more regular thing so that when we really do have those step back and let's talk broad vision, what is Travify 2020 or, or, or whatnot? those you're, are able to be much more thoughtful because we are using our data on the daily basis. And if you were to look back at, at where you are now and if there's any, anything you would do differently, what would that be? Well, hindsight's 2020. So in a good way, there, there's lots of different things we uh, would do differently. And if we only knew now what we uh, uh, only knew then what we knew now, but there are some really core things that I would take away that I think, you know, both for Travify, but also for any business were really kind of transferable lessons. Um, number one would be to just go for it. Um, I think that, you know, a balance that we all try to, um, or a line that we all try to toe is that balance between, on the one hand, um, as lean as possible. Build something as quickly as you can, ship it, learn from it, uh, build lessons that way versus, 
you know, I, I think a, a, an ivory tower approach on build it till it's perfect, till it's complete and then push it out there. And I think trying to find that right balance where you're not afraid of pushing new product out there. You're not afraid of learning lessons from testing things. Go for it. Now be smart about it. Uh, anytime we test and push stuff out there, which we're always lean in our approach, you try to mitigate that risk. So you say if building something is going to take this amount of time, um, what is that smallest piece that gets us an MVP maybe to here where we can actually push it out and learn from it? You're kind of buying an option where you're saying I'm pushing it out, I'm learning about it, and if I see the right things, the right data, we're going to double down in terms of that investment. And if not, well, that's actually a smart thing and that's great. And we now know to pull back. And so that is something that I would say and, uh, for anyone, if you're thinking about something, just jump in and test it. Um, and there's times where I think we've done a great job of that. And there's times, frankly, where I think we've sat on our hands a little too long or pushed it a little too far before building that test. Um, I think some of the other lessons that, you know, I, I, we've gleaned from our experiences, which sort of go with that. Um, number one would be, and, and this is actually one of our core team values, is uh, celebrate success, but embrace failure. Failure is not a negative thing. It's not a dirty word. Failing is great because failing lets you know paths to not go down. Um, and so with that, um, and similar to what you know we were just discussing, if you can smartly fail and mitigate risks into bite-sized chunks and tests, you're being as lean as possible, you're learning as much as possible, and those micro failures actually put you on the right path. Um, and so that's very, very important for us. I like that idea of a micro, I mean, if, when we say failure, we just mean we, we, you know, we, in a sense, it's not a failure at all, right? Because if you're using a disciplined approach, you have a feature that was a plausible thing to try and it didn't pass the test, then it's just progress, right? Absolutely. And, and so that's the way, you know, we, the reason we have that as one of our core values is the way we talk about that at Travify and we think that is, is exactly that. It's an unemotional thing. A, a failure, if, if my job is to test 10 things and all 10 of them don't work, that doesn't mean David did a poor job this week. David succeeded by saying, guys, let's not do these 10 things. Now let's find 10 other things to test. Those are some great tips on running a lean team from David Chait. Thanks, David, again, for joining us. Thank you so much.